Welcome to another episode of Learning to Fly and for the second time. Damn it! I forgot to click record on my recording device. Must add that to a checklist. Anyway, I'm not going to be offended. If you leave right now, that's fine. If you do want to stay, I'm just going to commentate over the top and give a bit of just running commentary throughout the flight. I'm about two hours 50 left to do on my solo hours for a minimum before I can go and get that license. And I'm going to do the GST right at the end. It is an option to do it now, but I might as well do some more solo consolidation, feel even more comfortable in the plane itself. And this is just another one of those flights. As you can see, we've taken off there on 08. I've just got the flaps away. We're at 300 feet. And it was a bit of an interesting morning, actually. So just hours building for my MPPL at Kemble Flying Club. And there was just a few whispers of cloud at sort of circuit height. So I lower the nose a little bit to stop the, the climb and reduce the power a little bit. You can see I'm going quite quickly there though. It's about 85 miles an hour, 90 even. So again, I've just lowered the rate of climb to come under these clouds, point towards a nice big gap essentially in the, in the clouds before again just raising that nose increasing the power again and aiming between a big gap getting above just the, again tiny tiny clouds as you can see up on the right hand corner there so there's the nose coming up and getting to that climb from being really critical the airspeed was probably too high in that entire maneuver i should have lowered the power a little bit there to be honest so there you can see full climb adapted adopted and we're at 1,200 feet now at about the right climb rate. So 73 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour roughly there. And we're above the clouds or level with them now. Yeah, you can see that we're now above the clouds, which was amazing. It's the first time I've sort of cloud surfed. Again, you've got to be so careful with VFR rules. And there I'm saying, this is amazing. <laughs> Just looking around I'm like, whoa, I'm above the clouds. So the Cotswold Water Park to the left there, you can see the lakes, which are amazing. And it was just a stunning day, really smooth above, again, those clouds, just really, really smooth. I think I'll level out any second now. So I'm doing a free to check fuel, radio, engine temperatures and pressures. In fact, radio, I'm still on that. I'm just making the call now to Campbell to say I'm leaving the circuit or leaving the ATZ one of the two probably. And I'm just trimming it out there. That's what that is on the ceiling. It's a little trim tab that you move to get your cruise speed that you want. And look how smooth it is. My hand isn't on the control stick at all. I've got time for hands-off notes. That it's not moving at all. Found a nice cruise at 85 miles an hour at 2,500 feet. It was just absolutely beautiful day. So I do a full freedom now. Fuel is good. Radio, I turn up, make sure I'm listening to Kemble because I'm staying local. Engine temperatures and pressures, they all look good. That's the pressure, that's the coolant, and that's the oil temperature as well. And at this point, I'm just heading south at the moment. I'm moving on to my Frida. I'm probably talking about altitude, and I'm probably saying I'm going to stay on the QFE today. So I wanted to practice some manoeuvring. Ahead of doing some revision for my GST, my general skills test, I wanted to get back into hazel checks, which is something I haven't done for a while. See if I can remember it now. Oh, what's this? Height, airframe, security engine temperatures and pressures 
uh, lookout location or is it location lookout either way I'm doing my lookout I've done the first part of my hazel check and I'm having a good lookout 90 degrees right 90 degrees left and I have a good lookout to check there's no planes the reason I'm doing hazel checks I wasn't going to do any stalls or anything like that I just wanted to do some slower flight without doing a full stall I wanted to remind myself of how that felt and again I'm almost sort of not even at the incipient stage it was probably 20 miles an hour above the stall speed but just knock that nose forward which we'll get to in a minute and do some sort of slightly steeper turns as well again before just getting into that kind of frame of mind of refreshing everything I've done beforehand before a general skills test so with the hazel check complete I reduce the power which is the bar on the left hand side it's quite nice being able to explain a little bit more about the cockpit so you can see that I have one and an instructor has one on the right hand side as well. So on the left in my hand is the throttle. And you can see the speed coming back now. There's 65. There's 60 now. So I've left. No, there's no flap in. Stall speed should be about 39 I think. There's about 55, 50. So the nose doesn't look like it but the nose was up a bit. And there you go. Drop the nose and look the airspeed comes back. And I just wanted to get feel, a feel for that because I haven't done those for a while. It's something I will be doing with my instructor just for a session before my general skills test. Look under the wing. It's really important on the high wing aircraft. Not something you have to do, of course, in low wing aircraft such as a Eurostar. And then this is a steeper turn than I would have done before on my own, really. So again, good practice. Just not to lose, and I'm, I'm actually gaining altitude. You can see the bottom sort of next to the slip ball indicator is my VSI, my vertical speed indicator. I'm gaining a couple of hundred feet a minute there. The idea, if they, if I was asked to do a steep turn and maintain altitude, would be to apply enough power to keep your airspeed up, but not to gain altitude at that 60 degrees. That isn't 60 degrees. It's probably nowhere near, but it feels steep enough having not done them in a while, to be fair. That view is amazing. Can't get over that. When there isn't an instructor in the plane, that the, the view of the Sky Ranger and you've just got Perspex down to two and a half, three thousand feet below you to the ground, it's so exhilarating. So at this point, I challenge myself on uh, sort of a mini Navex exercise, if you like. I mean, I, my, pro my producer for work, he lives in a, a village just outside Tetbury. And I said, do you know what? I'm going to come and fly over your house. Uh, so that was a little challenge after I'd done the sort of, you know, a couple of steepish turns and a couple of slow flight maneuvers. I just thought, well, do you know what? I'll fly over your house. He could get some pictures of me. And we did that. It was really good. And once I've done that, I climb again to get back over a slight inversion, if you like, what it is now. The, the bit more heat in the air, so the haze is kicking in now. So get back into that smoother air. It's certainly bumpy in the uh, sort of circuit height, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet sort of area. It's a lot bumpier, but again, on a nice day, as a general rule, not always the case, but yeah, the higher you go, the smoother it gets. so cool again you've got to be careful flying vfr with clouds but i could really see that there were few and far between and just flying next to them like that is is cool even though that's a good distance away from me and all legal and everything it was amazing first time i've actually flown in t-shirt actually in shorts as well so a first a first for me today in that one looking out on those fields on the left you can see Kemble top left of the screen there you actually see the really straight line is the old Foss Way which is an old Roman road and I'm having a good look at Kemble and anyone who might be in the overhead or in the circuit which is off to my left there so I start maneuvering towards Kemble now and I make the call that I am inbound making a note of the QFE 
uh, just to check that I've got that right and I make a change. And I'm at nearly 3,000 feet there. I'm at 2,750 ish. So I need to get to the overhead height, which at Kemble is 2,000 feet. So I'm in a. I, would, I was going to say a cruise descent, but that looks like a power off descent there, so. And again, that is, I'm afraid my arm's in the way there, so I'm just trimming out. And I'm doing a free to check as well. Fuel, radio, engine temperatures and pressures, direction and altitude to sort of check you're on the right QFE or the right pressure setting. Trim for speed, so don't want to speed up too much. And in the descent, certainly on a colder day, you just need to keep an eye on those pre uh, the temperatures as well. There I am, looking chubby. All belted up into that <laughs> very comfortable seat actually in the Sky Ranger. It's really quite comfy and so power back on, two thousand feet, then bring the nose up, of course. You don't want to bring the nose up, then put your power on because you're gonna lose airspeed that way. So big chunk of power and then I'm trying to maintain two thousand feet, so you'll see me trim out there for two thousand feet and I'll be joining the overhead any second. So trying to stay at the 2,000 feet for the overhead. And at this point, I am descending dead side, is what it's called. Once I've descended dead side, you'll see me join crosswind. And then on to downwind.
So we are just on base leg now, just about to turn onto final. So it's really important at this stage of the flight that you look out final, which is to the left there as I'm landing on 08. Maintaining speed is important and just maintaining a really steady approach. So there's a first stage of flaps. You could actually see them go on, which is pretty cool. Which again will just help increase a little bit of drag, but also increase lift so you can approach slower. So we're at 600 feet now. And there's a little side slip. You can tell because of the slip ball. Sort of spirit level, if you like, below the altimeter. You can tell the little ball went to the right-hand side. So that was a side slip, just to lose some altitude without gaining too much airspeed. And there's full flap going in now. And I'm making my call for final to land on 08 grass. It's good to specify whether you're on 08 hard or grass. I mean, the, the guys in the tower will ask you if you don't specify. Uh, certainly if you're a microlight, they'll probably assume you're going to go for the grass. And now I'm just concentrating on keeping that 65, 75 miles an hour sort of speed limit. No faster than 70, certainly. Approaching the grass, and we are at 150 feet. There's 100 feet, losing 650 feet a minute, probably-ish. Just coming into the round out now. And then I can hear my instructor, right rudder, right rudder, left stick. So I'm trying that as much as possible, and then the hold off. And there we go. Thanks for watching this one. So sorry I didn't record the audio. I promise it'll be the last time I do that. Thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, click that thumbs up, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.